Good. So as always, a little introduction. And uh, you might remember from our last call that uh, we presented the three roles. Um, so there is the role of the learner, the guide, and the guardian. And uh, on the ARC in your impact page, when you progress and you do stuff in nature, then you, you progress in those three roles. You progress as a learner, you collect impact points, and you have impact uh, planets. Um, you progress as a guide and you facilitate nature education and you collect trees, you pack trees, and you progress as a guardian. Um, and you collect impact points and uh, impact minerals. The minerals was uh, the new thing that we presented. But today we share with you how we think that environmental learning can be supported by a very special form of play. So it is really about the learner. How can the learner learn through playing? Um, and related to this is this question, how can environmental education really be scaled? Um, we, we talked in the past that there is definitely an intersection between social transformation and environmental or ecological transformation. But uh, today we really focus on, on this uh, topic of environmental education. And another slide that we showed earlier is this difference between education and learning. So education is usually handed down through an institution and it requires teachers. Um, and that's also what we generally do in an informal environment with green steps. We have uh, nature guides. That's also what Forest School does now. They are facilitators and they facilitate people to experience nature. But there are clear studies that show that uh, uh, the age bracket between 12 and 35 prefers to actually not to be guided. Uh, people more and more want to learn on their own. And this learning is self-directed. It's directed by the student and it does not require an institution. So the big question is, how, how can nature connection really be scaled most effectively? And um, there can be classes, very traditional. We have here a picture from Matilda, uh, this Roald Dahl uh, novel and film. Then there can be training, you know, we have a, a nature guide training. Um, like Master Yoda training Luke Skywalker um, in, in whatever, being a, a Jedi. Um, but maybe there is also something else. And this something else that we have been thinking about a lot uh, in the last few months, if not years, is gamification. So a few words uh, on gamification. First, what, what is it? So in short, gamification is doing meaningful things with fun and perseverance. Um, but gamification is also a craft, uh, I would say a design craft of deriving all the fun and engaging elements found in games and then applying them to real world or productive activities. And environmental learning is, is, is certainly uh, such a productive activity that is much needed now. So um, maybe just a quick question. Have, have who has had uh, a little bit of deeper contact with this subject of gamification? Martina, you lift in um, a, a small finger? Yes, a small, <laughs> small. It's really like, I just know that uh, in Switzerland, like uh, the IAP, I think, make a lot of studies about learning through gamification just in this time of Corona. So I just know that there is a lot of science now also, how we can learn much better also now to use gamification in, in all directions. Like this I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But myself, I, I just now have a young woman which I have to find like a good gamification um, company to make her school there. So I'm now into this to see, okay, which partners or which companies are also doing gamification now for health or for uh, ecosystem or, or sustainability and, and like just at the moment, but not um, more actually. Okay, anybody else wants to share? Well, my first contact was um, when starting to work with food actually and reading the 
a book called Irresistible by Adam Alter, is it? Mm -hmm. Which is a really good book on this subject. How basically um, uh, psychological traits uh, of addictive traits are being used um, in uh, products uh, to make people use them more. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is really, I think, the most recommendable book as a, as a, a starting uh, literature. Also all relatively scientific, though. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you don't have any other comments to share, um, then we, we go a little bit more forward. Um, so, Martina also said there is sci science, more science about this subject. Yes, there is now really a big interest in gamification since about 2019. More and more scientific articles are being published, but um, uh, actually gamification is already applied quite a long time, especially in a work environment. And um, we have been looking into this Octolysis framework, uh, which describes gamification. And I thought today, before we really show you what we do, um, we get a few words and terminology, right? So. In this framework, which basically focuses on uh, gamification in that sense, the more of these elements you have in your game, the more likely it is to really change behavior, the more impactful it is. And the Octolysis framework has eight elements. You see them on the right side, epic meaning, accomplishment, empowerment, ownership, social influences, scarcity, unpredictability, unpredictability and avoidance. And these uh, eight elements are again divided in four groups which overlap. So we have white hat uh, elements. They create positive emotions. One example is ownership. If I have the feeling or the real ownership of uh, a game, then I'm more likely to be motivated to play it. The black hat elements are negative emotions. So for example, social influences, there is this widely known fear of missing out. So you, you engage in social media because you don't want to miss the next message. Um, and then there are left brain uh, drives and right brain drives. This is not really scientific, but it is meant to describe extrinsic motivation. So I do something because I get something in exchange. And the right brain drives are intrinsic motivators. I do something because I'm just interested in it. It's enjoyable. Um, so maybe also one example each, a right brain drive, intrinsic motivation uh, would be the epic meaning. I'm doing something because I really feel that I have a calling to contribute. Um, and this is in a lot of games, you are like the hero no? And as a hero, you have to, um, I don't know, save the world, maybe. And then <laughs> sell done. Um, and then an example for left brain core drives would be um, scarcity. So scarcity means that um, you, you um, have very limited supply of something. And this is why you calculate to get this uh, resource. And this is also applied in successful games quite a bit. Now, um, this is not theory. It is really happening in uh, the uh, labor market quite a bit. Uh, so those are statistics that show uh, that there is an impact of gamification, a survey that was done amongst employees. So 90% of employees like gamification. Uh, if there is good gamification happening in a workplace, then uh, employees stay longer. Um, then 72% think that gamification inspires them to work harder. And there is quite a high enjoyment uh, level. Um, so thinking about this, that the real task is now to figure out how we can apply this success story um, to a social and ecological transformation. And, and our take, you know it, is this mobile campus 4.0 concept. Um, and we think of it as a run and jump 4.0. And what does this mean? It's, it's, it's a format 
uh, for 12 to 35 year olds. And the learners and facilitators, they play and create a game in their ecosystem, wherever they are, they create the internet of nature and thereby step-by-step, uh, step, they create a deeper ecosystem understanding. And those are the routes that you see here. But um, to hand over to Lucas and Gloria, I actually found recently a very nice quote. Um, this is Werner Herzog, a, a quite a famous uh, German-born, but now American-based America -based director. He did a lot of great documentaries, and he's a master of perception. And he said, the world reveals itself to those who travel on foot. And a run and jump game that happens in the real world means that we travel on foot and get a deeper connection, but in, a, in the form of a game with nature. So that's it for an intro. Um, I'm handing over to Lucas and Gloria. Great. Thanks for the intro, Claude. So um, today we will introduce you um, uh, the run and jump uh, game uh, in action. So Gloria will first start with um, showing it a little bit from the facilitator point of view or creator, and then I will be showing a little bit from the player point of view. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen immediately. Mm, let's do this, i share. And uh, here. So what I'm going to show you with you right now, this is the info board that you are actually meeting, like encountering, when you are entering in a location where the game is implemented. So in the info board, what you see is on the top, there are the rules of the game and a QR code that you can actually scan to enter in the game. And then you're going to see the map of the garden. So here is, for now, we have implemented it in two locations here in St. Polten. One is Bio Austria, and the other is a garden in a school. And uh, what you have in the bottom are the species, the three species, and the different stops on the way. Now I'm going to go slower, and I can read with you like the, the rule of the game. So what you need to do first is, of course, you move to the tree number one, and you scan a QR code. Like on every stop, there will be a QR code on each tree. And you scan the QR code to play. Then, uh, OK, sorry, yeah, first you should do this. And then, yeah, go to the first stop. You answer to the quizzes, to the quiz that appear to you. You will get the impact points. You can try as many times you want for now like to get the correct answer. Uh, but then you will get the impact points. And uh, you will collect uh, the species and specimen cards. For now, those are not totally ready. We have a few of them, but uh, later we will have more cards ready. And um, then, uh, of course, explore our routes and become a guardian of your hometown. So um, let's look more closely to the map. What you see in the middle, there is uh, a building. And uh, on the side is explaining you, you, for example, how long it is. So this is like uh, 0 0.8 kilometers long. It will take you around uh, an hour or two to answer to all the questions. Uh, biodiversity is pretty low. I mean, it's just uh, a garden in a, in, a, in a city, so it will not be very high. It's a 2.5. And accessibility, we put like four on five because uh, anyway, on a garden, it's quite difficult to go in between with a wheelchair. So let's give it like four. But it's still very, very easy and simple to walk. And uh, and also, yeah, here, here there are like all the species in Latin with a code on the side. So it's uh, somehow easier to identify them if you have a knowledge of, <laughs> of the three species. And uh, what I'm gonna show you now, so let's say um, we can move now to the stop number one and you can get a different number of questions with different topics. Uh, the question could be, for example, uh, actually, you know, I'm gonna show you, let's move to the first tree. The first tree is called the Hera. Now I will share with you this screen and see if you see it. Uh, you see Sibla? Okay, nice. So I am already, this is Hera, this is the tree. I'm gonna show you, oh, sorry. And uh, oh, okay. 
I wanna go, oh, it's very small. What I'm gonna show you, I just wanna show you the gallery because this is what you are seeing there. Like you just see the real tree, you don't see any other information. So you, you what can you touch is the bark or for example, here you have bark and you have the shape of the leaves. Mm, so questions could be to describe the barks. Question can be to describe the leaf, like the shape, the margins, and then maybe to identify the species with a picture from the species. Uh, other type of question could be to see the type of soil that you have. Others can be to see like how much light this tree is getting. Other questions might be also, can you look closer to the bark and check the number of insects that you see? Or maybe look at the crown and check the birds, like are there any birds? Um, yeah, so mostly, and then we have also more general questions about the species, but uh, and anyway, any location, like uh, and any facilitator can somehow make up, let's say, new questions that might be more specific to the specimen. Or if it's a rare species, of course, you can also put questions about the culture, cultural information, like why is this species rare or not? Now, I'm not going to tell you which species it is, unless you don't know it already or you have read it before. Uh, but let's end of the game to Lucas and show you which question we're going to get for this tree. Yep, good. So this was uh, from the perspective of um, the sharing. creator. So maybe before I start, a few more points. What we have created here is a way for anyone to use the specimens that they have mapped in the arc. Yeah, so you went around the town or in the park and you map 10 trees. Now you can create this self-guided gamified route out of them. Yeah, So you create the route and you need to hang the QR codes on the tree and uh, then people can walk this route and to learn about the trees by themselves. Yeah? So it's absolutely connected with uh, the mapping tool and with the whole species and specimens library that we came up with uh, earlier. Um, yeah, so let's imagine that uh, I am in the park. I'm going to share the screen of my phone and uh, scan the QR code and uh, we can have a look of um, at uh, how this works. So just give me a little while to open the phone screen. All right, so I go into QR scanner and I have the, um, the real version of what Gloria just showed you. And so I would be at the info board in the park and uh, I, um, scan this code and I enter to the game. So this is the intro screen where you can see where what uh, information about the about the walk. Uh, the same as Gloria has just described to you, some initial text and uh, the map. Um, I will go and explore. So I tap the explore button, I get some initial information about what to do. So I need to follow the map uh, to find the next stop. There I need to scan the QR code and to go through the quiz. And if I get everything correctly, I receive impact points and the collectible specimen cards into my art profile. And what we do also, we when we are doing this with an event. When there is an event out there, people can pick up a printed version of the card so they can start their real world uh, collection. So let's start. I can see the map and I have a button to scan the QR code. I'm indoors now, so you cannot see me. Um, I don't know if I can get my location. I, uh, I'm somewhere nearby, but I'm not there. <laughs> so let's imagine that I'm in the park. <laughs> and I'm going to go to stop number one. So I navigate myself. I can see my position. I can walk to the tree and then I will see the tree. I can actually have a look at what the tree looks like by tapping there. And I can see uh, the tree so that I can uh, identify it easier. And then I arrived and I scanned the QR code. Sorry, that was uh, the wrong QR code. <laughs> 
my phone was pointed at the info board still. And this is the QR code of the stop. And so now I'm in the game. I I will come to the first stop and I'm getting into the quiz. Mm -hmm. So I need to look at the bark and match it with the right species. So I need to find out what the uh, kind of the bark is. So could you help me, uh, Gloria? Vertical which... ridges. Vertical ridges. OK. Good enough that I'm going with a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> I check and it's correct. It Great. should be for kids. <laughs> it's for kids, but uh, for IT guys, it might also be difficult. Okay, so now the species. What is it? Black locust, sweet cherry, common ash, or common lime? Mm. I'm going to try a sweet cherry <laughs> and check. Oh no. Uh, try again. We need the sound. The sound is actually. Really the sound would be good indeed, yeah. So is it a lime? You can keep trying, right? I, I can just... keep trying. <laughs> okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm stuck. Okay. Ah, ah. Correct. Yes. All right. Now I need to look at the leaf and find out what is the margin of the leaf. So what is the shape? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So I think mean? it's a simple. A simple, yeah. Check. Um, yes, <laughs> I'm quite experienced already. And uh, here, this this is all new vocabulary for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, this is a complex one. Is it uh, Hello, what? serrate? Mm, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> all right, good. So the idea is that people look at the leaves and uh, inspect them uh, and then compare with the picture, right? And learn the new vocabulary at the same right. time. We learn the vocabulary to describe nature. Okay, and now I again, this is just for an example. Of course, now the player already knows the species, but I need to determine which species it is. So it was um, a common lime, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, check. And I have passed the test, I have completed the stop. I was awarded one impact point and I got a new specimen card into my collection. Brilliant. And now I continue. And if I'm back in the map, so just to explain the logic, the green ones are the ones that I have already observed and the gray ones are the ones that I haven't been to yet. So now basically my mission would be to go to stop number two and uh, answer more questions. Yeah. So that's how it works. Um, do you want to uh, show the sum up slide and then we uh, then we go to the discussion? Yeah, um, can do. Um, then I need to turn my share. Let me know if you see it on the screen. Let me see the, the moderator screen. Yes. Okay. Good. Now it's good. Now it's good. So um, this game will be we call Big Friendly Giants because it's currently limited to large trees. Um, but it is one gamification form within this mobile campus concept. Um, it's free to use. It's non-proprietary. So um, you can do it anywhere in any local project, and it's really support. Uh, it, it requires the support of um, of uh, a crowd, a local crowd, to really build it. This is also the problem that uh, Hans ran into. In order to kickstart such a project, you need to be at least two because you review the mappings. Ideally, you are three or even four. You review the mappings and then you build the game. Um, it serves the objective of skating pro environmental pro environmental behavior. And what we offer is in this, um, let's call it toolkit, is not only the online version, but actually also this entire offline thing. So um, we have done here a very handy job with uh, laminating the QR codes. And what we do is we use ropes, like the Japanese, we use ropes to um, 
put them around the trees. And then we use just a little cord and then put this um, QR code, the laminated QR code on the rope. So it is a very kind of a low tech solution that everybody can build. And in case you are in Zurich and you, the government jumps in and say, hey, we're gonna support this project. We have a lot of money. You can of course also do it in aluminum or any other material that it lasts forever. But uh, we, we have now a very, very cheap version. And I think it will be around a hundred euros in terms of material costs for one route. So it's, 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 it's really cheap and can be reused over and over again. And um, the info boards that you saw, we also created in a laminated manner, A2 or A3. Um, so it's also very affordable. And uh, the game is basically ready to go. And maybe also important um, to mention this, we do this locally here as Green Steps, but um, we're gonna have next week already another project in a, in a local nonprofit. And the idea is that you that it's always done by the local organization, ownership. So they're gonna have their logo here. It's not a Green Steps project. They just get the toolkit and they do it on their own. Yeah, I mean, that's what we share today and um...